Hi. Welcome to Ironhurst Garage. This is Bonnie. I'm Clyde. And today... What's hey, 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 hey. Arco! Arco, it's a trick! It's a trick, Arco! Arco hey, shut, trick. shut him up! Shut him up! We're just uh, showing him the ropes. So, welcome to Iron Horse Garage. We're here with Robert from Vino Rat Rod Builds. We do have a release form that Robert is going to have to sign and acknowledge. Basically, the gist of it is that uh, Robert acknowledges the possibility and probability of bodily injury, which may include, but not limited to, excessive mental abuse, physical damage, which I believe we have already covered, uh, to his person, bleeding from the eyes, mental fatigue, irritability, Sudden hearing loss, severed limbs, stubbed toes, chronic back pain. Uh, the signer also has to acknowledge the fact that hanging out with Iron Horse Garage may lead to divorce, incarceration, indictment, near-death experiences, and being recognized for excessive awesomeness. Our companionship fee, which we charge everybody uh, for the use of our facilities, fraternization fee, that's on a daily basis, uh, $3,799.99. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. If you want what? To. Well, that's just a standard procedure. You know. I'm going to have to read this over. Acknowledge the possibilities and probabilities of bodily injury. What? Is it that dangerous around here? Uh, well, Jason works here. So. Including but not limited to excessive mental abuse, physical damage to my person, such as bleeding from the eyes, mental fatigue, irritability, sudden hearing loss. You guys are difficult around this place. <laughs> now, it's a big X and a little X, and the little X is because I'm a junior. There you go. There you go. All right, now that we have this release form, let's get going. Robert! Robert! I'm done. I want a divorce. Wait, 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 wait! What, huh? William! This is, uh, that's why we get signatures right here. He signed the waiver. This is awkward. <laughs> Plasma cutting out these buckets. I was grinding them out, but I'm not going to spend two weeks grinding out these buckets. Plasma cut out those brackets. Spray you? Huh? I <laughs> said, so you want me to spray you? No. Here at Ironhurst Garage, we do quite a bit of painting with silver markers. Perfect. So, we fitted up the bag. I've uh, got it all bolted into place. Figure out where it's going to go. Now I'm just making some marks to, uh, to uh, make some cuts there to make sure the bag never touches the frame. Got it marked and figured out for the outside. So that I know exactly how it goes back in when I uh, put it all back together. All right, so we got the airbags in place. Oh yeah. Control arms are going on, and we're gonna drop this down by the end of the day, right, Jason? Yes, sir. That's right. Ta-da! I did it. He did it. What did you do? Oh, I put some up nut on a bolt. Nice. Good job, dude. Yeah, good job. I'm pretty good. Huh? Fancy. Yeah, I'm pretty good. Jason was a rocket scientist, but that was too easy for him, so he decided to do this. Yeah. Yeah, rocket science. That's for babies. Boring. Hey, Jason, will you make me a sandwich? 
Uh, sure. Really? No. Oh, dang it. Are these the right nuts and bolts, you might ask? Well, they are now. Anything works if you twist it hard enough, right? <laughs> I'm about 40% positive these are the exact ones that came out here. <laughs> Junior, shut up! Yeah, shut up, you little chicken. Turn you into fried chicken soon. We're getting her done. Well, got her all back together. Just need to tighten up my bolts and my nuts here. And then we'll uh, set her on the ground and see uh, how low she is and take some measurements and go from there. I'm going in. I'm gonna go under this baby. We got the bottom plates on the lower control arms. Jason said everything's good to go. So I'm gonna go down there and tack these babies in place. We'll see what's going on. Since I'm gonna be welding on the lower control arm, you want your ground actually on the lower control arm. You don't want to put it someplace where it's going to transfer any heat through a bearing or a bolt or anything like that. You need to ground directly to what you're working on. We have our uh, bags in position. And then once I tack weld these babies on, on the bottom plates, we will uh, pull the bags up and finish welding uh, the plates solid. Tack welds on the lower control arm and the plate and attaches to the airbag. Tacked in place. Uh, as you can tell here, the clearance on the bag is uh, much better. Uh, Jason spent all day grinding and cutting. Also, Aaron spent time grinding and cutting these babies make clearance in that uh, pocket for the airbags. So when this baby's uh, hopping up and down, nothing, nothing should be in the way. So with a calculated eyeball measurement and laser precision, I have determined that this bag needs to be pushed in just a little bit so that the plate can be welded in the exact same place and position as the other side. While well, laying on your back welding, um, it's best to weld with your mouth closed.
you got going on over there, man? Can't get a darn good one. Darn good? Probably gotta keep them being nice to me, man. Just keep them on camera all the time. My phone doesn't have that much space. <laughs> well, golly gee willikers. I think we've done a nice job here. Uh, let me show you what we got. And there's that side tacked in place. And uh, looks about like the other side. Same type of thing here. All kinds of clearance around the bag. We let the jack down? Yep. We're going to release the jack. And uh, let's see what this baby does. We do have jack stands along the frame of the car here. So I was not at any point in danger. No. Well, we're going to uh, install the wheels, set this baby on the ground. See how she looks. All right, brethren, you ready to put this thing on the ground? Drop it, drop it, drop it, low. Jason, I need the jack. Come on. <laughs> Pretty low. I think, uh, I think we probably should have dropped it like it was cold. Because if you drop it like it's hot, your jack gets stuck on it. She is low. What do you want to do? See if you can get the back jack out. You got hydraulics or what? Oh yeah, three wheel motion. Well, we're putting this, uh, drill the hole, put in this pretty little grommet here. Keep it from rubbing on the steel. And uh, now we'll bolt her in and uh, start running some lines. Oh, I put my pants. That'll split and this will be our line coming out of the frame rail up into the floor for the gauges. Make day of sure. All things are connected. So we're just gonna run that line down the frame? Yes. Well, we had some problems on the other side with uh, where we were gonna run our initial line up through the frame rails here. So what we did is we actually ran a line from the bag up here that comes down and comes out the frame back here. And, uh, and then this line will come out here 
and around the frame so that you can put in your uh, splits, your tees without uh, having them stuck inside the frame rail uh, and not being able to access them whatsoever when you get them in there. So that's what uh, we kind of struggled with on the other side is figuring that out. But now that we've got it figured out, we'll knock the side out. So I actually don't know what hole it came out of on the other side because you were down there. I never actually looked at it. You'll have to tell me what hole that it's in. Oh, oh. We ran it down here and came out there. That's what we did. So the kit that it came, kit that we got came with straight fittings. It looked like these. They have the screw off cap. Screws them on there. I didn't like them. I didn't like them one bit, plus they were straight. So we got the MPT uh, swivel fitting, sir. That way if there's any movement in the line, uh, it can move a little bit. So one thing that's really cool about these is got little teeth in there. You just shove the hose in and then it clamps down on itself and that keeps it with all that high pressure. Keeps it from coming out. That'll do, bud. That'll do. <laughs> Why are you filming me? Because you're finally doing work for a change. I hate it when people film me in the dark. Well, that's where you spend most of your life, isn't it? See that nut? Right. Uh, it's right there or something. Oh, under under careful inspection of the uh, customer's vehicle, we have found the evidence of. Uh, driving through a party and possibly uh, driving through some balloons because there's a balloon string wrapped around the fan shaft there. That could be evidence of, uh, of uh, clown homicide. It could be clown homicide. So uh, that will have to go. We also uh, found evidence of Jason working. Don't tell nobody. So what we're gonna do is we need to run the quarter inch line from this T here straight up the back of the engine and through the firewall for the gauges. Brake lines on this side. Tighten the castle nut and put a carter pin in. Spelt C-O-T-T-E-R, right? Cotter pin. Yeah, but you said Carter pin. I always said Carter pin. A lot of most people do. No, oh, it's Cutter pin. I know, I know that it's Cotter pin. But everybody says Carter pin. Hard at work or hardly working. All right, so Jason now has the that white airline is hooked up, ran through the firewall. And now we can hook it into the gauges. Oh yeah, bud. Plenty of room there, bud. So those are front gauge. Going for the test to see if it holds air pressure. We got air pressure. Oh man, I did it again. All right, let's put some air in the bag. Oh yeah. Looking good. 
All right, here's a test run on the front airbags. We got pressure. Drop it like it's hot. Things don't age very far. All right, so we got about two inches of clearance. Jason's gonna go ahead and throw some air in there. Say we have like three inches. That's being generous. Thanks for hanging out. It's our lunchtime, so we'll catch you next episode.